It starts with a name. Okay, fine. Technically, it starts with a quality spirit, some creative bartenders, a thirsty public, good times, and a great story, and then the name catches on. There are thousands of cocktails, with twists on every one. Sometimes also literally twists. Anyway, we're going to tell the stories of not only what goes into the glass of some of the world's most iconic and inventive cocktails, but how it got there. And we begin with the one that started it all. From the Singapore Sling to the Moscow Mule to the Bloody Mary, no cocktail lays out its whole vibe right there in its name like the Old Fashioned. To find out more about the Old Fashioned, we're going to need some legit experts. I'm Jackie Zykin. I'm the master taster for Old Forester. Whoa, that sounds cool. What kind of things do you do? New product development, quality assurance. I was a bartender for 10 years. I have a background in biology and chemistry, and then that coupled up with all of my cocktail experience really sets me up to be in a good spot to sort of share the word of whiskey with the world. My name is Tim Cooper. I'm a longtime New York City bartender. Whoa, dude, you startled me. Okay, now we're in New York. I've started my career in 1997, and I've been behind the bar for 20 years. Uh, the only thing better than one expert is two experts. Let's dive into the history of the Old Fashioned. First, what exactly is an Old Fashioned? The Old Fashioned is a simple classic cocktail where whiskey is the foundation. At its core, you have two ounces of rye or bourbon, a lump of sugar, citrus peel, aromatic bitters, and then you have your one heaping lump of ice. It's an amazing cocktail if you want to get into whiskey, but perhaps don't want to dive straight into drinking it neat. You can really take any aged spirit category and throw it into the, to the Old Fashioned mix. So you have the Scotch Old Fashioned, Brandy Old Fashioned, you're looking at simple old fashions that are very primitive and what I like to call the old smashing when you start muddling up a fruit salad in there. Shout out to Wisconsin, who kept the old fashioned alive for many, many years. You can make an old fashioned in any way, shape or form. It's so customizable to however your personal flavor profile speaks. While you're fixing that, couldn't you put a nice little shot of whiskey in it? The old fashioned is traditionally a whiskey drink. So before we get into the history of the old fashioned, it helps to know a little bit about whiskey in America. Whiskey, pre-1870, was the wild, wild west. Basically, make it brown, make it have a bite, move on with your day. The barrels, you can't see inside of them, so it could be anything. People are getting sick, going blind. Rot gut was definitely a thing. It was a very scary time in the whiskey world. Yeah, I'll take a pass on rot gut. So what happened? A gentleman by the name of George Garvin Brown saw an opportunity to maybe put a little bit of reins on an industry that was otherwise unregulated. If we remove the barrel element of it and go ahead and batch it to make sure it's consistent and actually taste it and make sure it's quality and seal it in a glass bottle only and sell it, that way at least we know that it's not going to be all over the place. Okay, so George starts Old Forester and they're the first ones to bottle bourbon. We're gonna need that for our old fashioned. But what about the history of cocktails themselves? You first see it in America in 1806, and there's a direct reference to, to this, this term being used for an alcohol beverage. And you actually get publishing of a cocktail template, if you will, in an actual newspaper. And it's spirit, sugar, bitters, and water. And so, with us, we kind of think of that as being the primitive template of an old-fashioned. So, one could argue that there's a very close parallel between the name cocktail and, of course, the old-fashioned. You don't start seeing it actually referred to as an old-fashioned cocktail until that recipe gets passed on another 75 years or so. By then, it was an old-fashioned way of making a cocktail. So, ta-da! Aha! So the old fashioned is old, but where do we think it came from? It really depends on who's telling the story. The old fashioned kind of popped up here and there throughout the late 1700s, 1800s. There are documents of people publishing this recipe down in New Orleans, uh, and it was actually a drink served with a spoon to make sure that you could stir up all the sugar in it. It was almost like a garnish where you could scoop up your your cherry or your citrus peel or the sugar in it, and it's basically a, a tool you can play with while you consume. But that's not the only version of this story, right? Then there are some folklore that will insist that it started in Kentucky. Kentucky Derby was a thriller in the great tradition of the run for the roses. Ah, uh, I've heard this one. Legend states that the first Old Fashioned was made at a private club on Walnut Street in downtown Louisville, just minutes from the Old Forester Distillery on the historic Whiskey Row. Wait a second.
Does that mean that it was made with Old Forester? With a brand that's been around since 1870 consistently, literally there hasn't been a day since then that you haven't been able to buy a bottle of Old Forester, even during Prohibition, but you had to fake having a cough or something for it. Regardless, with Old Forester being around so long, of course, many, many old fashions have been made with it. So there are plenty of possibilities for where the old fashioned was born, but it's pretty safe to say that it kind of grew up in New York City. Pre-prohibition drinking in New York City was a tale of the haves and the have-nots. If you were rich and well-to-do, you were drinking in beautiful hotel bars. If you were just a, a regular middle-class, run-of-the-mill individual, you were drinking your neighborhood pub or almost like shanty bar. And the sawdust on the floor, the, the fights, there weren't any women allowed. And then, prohibition. You had the retreat of the professional bartender. The great bartenders went to Cuba, went to Argentina, went to London, went to Paris. You lost this culture of great bartenders who really understood the, the nuance of, of cocktail ingredients. And the quality of booze went down too, seeing as most of it was homemade. A lot of cocktails kind of had their genesis in this sort of, how do we mask bad booze movement? So you get a lot of that during Prohibition when it was sort of, we'll take whatever we can get, whatever has alcohol in it, but you want it to be palatable, so you're gonna have to mix it up. And you also see this repeat after World War II. Ready. A lot of distilleries actually shut down to produce alcohol for industrial grade. People were still drinking, so what does that mean? Once they could fire their stills back up again, they inflamed their product inventory by mixing grain neutral spirit with already aged spirit. And now you see the birth of blended whiskey on the market. Grain neutral spirit, don't let the neutral fool you. It's a little intense and does do better in a highball or something mixed up. You kind of see these interesting little moments of history where cocktails were really necessary in order for alcohol to even be palatable. Sounds like the old fashioned has quite a history and it's been with us throughout most of ours. Which brings us to today. You start seeing foodie culture take shape and you start seeing people getting a little bit more interested in what they're actually putting in their bodies and exploring different ingredients. That's kind of where the, the old fashioned really started to come back into play. It was these, you know, culinary aficionados who were going around the landscape in New York and looking for these classic experiences. So you see this massive, massive interest in sort of all of these old school ways of doing things. Everybody all of a sudden wants to wear a vest and like have a mustache. I've never been able to grow a mustache, so that's fine. The old fashioned is literally synonymous with the term cocktail. But you don't just talk about cocktails. You gotta make a couple. I'm going to prepare a classic old fashioned using the Old Forester 1920. The 1920 expression is very dimensional. It's some of our older barrels blended together and it really pays homage to our presence during Prohibition from 1920 to 1933 when we were sold as a medicinal product. That extra age on these barrels gives us a lot of really great oak character, some chocolate, some dark fruits, and all of that is gonna come through and complement the bitters exquisitely. We have two experts, so let's see two versions of this iconic drink, a traditional classic old fashioned and something with a little more of a modern flair. Today we're gonna to be making one of my old fashioned variations that I refer to as forbidden fruit. We're going to use Old Forester 1910, my absolute favorite Old Forester product to use for an old fashioned. This is a bourbon with a great background story. It's the story of the first double barreled bourbon due to a fire on the bottling line, which was a pretty tragic story at the time. There was this mature whiskey that was ready to go and there was nowhere to put it. So back into fresh oak charred barrels it went. So we'll start with two ounces of Old Forester 1920, followed by a third of an ounce of a rich Demerara syrup, and then two dropperfuls of aromatic bitters. So we're gonna grab our old fashioned glass and start this cocktail off with a couple dashes of aromatic bitters and then we'll get our syrup. In this case, we are using a pomegranate reduction, also known as grenadine, and we're taking the extra added step of spicing it with mulling spices. Next up, we're gonna use a half ounce of apple brandy. Apple brandy and pomegranate are a flavor pairing that loves each other, and they especially love big, meaty bourbons as well. Now, we're gonna pour an ounce and a half of Old Forester 1910.
When stirring an old fashioned, you're looking for the ice cube to break down and provide about one ounce of water content into your old fashioned. And the last step is to garnish it. So we're gonna use a lemon peel and spray the outside over the glass. And then an orange peel. And the outside over the glass as well. Today we're going to be using a long orange peel. Once the oils express over the top, we're going to rub the peel around the rim of the glass, add in, and we're good to go. Drop them in, and there you go. A classic old fashioned. Everything is just elevated and mingles in the glass nicely. Have fun, enjoy the process. Cheers. Cheers. So, whether you enjoy the traditional classic or you want to shake things up a bit, the old fashioned is a bold and balanced drink with a long past, and this, is cocktail history.